Hi students, good morning. This is CP Prashant from KV Ganeshkan, Pune. Uh, in the last session of electrochemistry, we had uh, discussed about the conductivity, molar conductivity, the variation of molar conductivity and conductivity with the dilution. The first thing that we will discuss today is, if you dilute a solution of a strong electrolyte, will there be a change in the molar conductivity? If there is going to be a change, how exactly the change will take place? Same way, suppose the solution is weak electrolyte, with the dilution how the molar conductivity will change? We will try to uh, understand the change in molar conductivity with the dilution for strong and weak electrolytes with the dilution, the reason for the kind of change and the uh, differences in the way the changes take place. So, uh, let us consider a solution of strong electrolyte, say for example, sodium chloride. You know why it is called a strong electrolyte? The electrolytes which dissociate completely in solution is a strong electrolyte. So, sodium chloride is a strong electrolyte because in solution it disso dissociates completely. Whereas, uh, you know, acetic acid being a substance which dissociate only partially, we call it a weak electrolyte. So, uh, we try to follow how molar conductivity changes with the dilution. We get a graph something like this. Molar conductivity here on the x-axis I have plotted concentration, square root of concentration. Here I am plotting the molar conductivity with the dilution with the dilution, what happens to concentration? With the dilution, concentration decreases. So, you can see in this particular direction, concentration is increasing. So, in the reverse direction, concentration is decreasing. Now, when the dilution is being increased, you can see the molar conductivity is slowly increasing. Now, the increase in molar conductivity uh, follows this path. Whereas, in the weak electrolyte, you can see the difference, molar conductivity changes like this. There is a steep rise, but afterwards, it goes almost straight to y axis. Now, the difference, if you look at, you will see that, if you extrapolate this graph, it will touch the y axis at certain point. What it means is, with the dilution, the molar conductivity of strong electrolyte keeps increasing ultimately it reaches a maximum value. So, beyond that, even if you dilute, the molar conductivity is not going to increase, it reaches a maximum value. Whereas, in the case of weak electrolyte, what you see is, initially when you dilute, there is a steep increase. That steep increase is not seen with a weak electrolyte. And as you keep increasing the dilution, it is not reaching a maximum value. It keeps increasing any dilution, you increase the dilution further, molar conductivity increases further. So, there are two changes. One, increase is not steep in molar conductivity in strong electrolyte, but it is very steep in the case of weak electrolyte, number one. Number two, in the case of strong electrolyte, it is reaching a maximum value. In the case of weak electrolyte, it is never reaching a maximum value. It keeps increasing. We need to explain these two aspects. Let us see why the increase is steep in strong weak electrolyte. It is not so steep in the strong electrolyte. Now, let us uh, examine it to something like this. Why the molar conductivity increases after all on dilution? The con molar conductivity can increase by two different ways. Maybe the number of ions are increasing because conductivity depends on the number of ions or it may be due to the speed of the ions the mobility of the ions. If the number of ions increase, you can expect the molar conductivity to increase. If the speed of the ions, again you can expect the molar conductivity to increase. So, what happens is, in the case of strong electrolyte, since the dissociation is already complete, you cannot expect the number of molecules to be increasing, number of particles to be increasing, because the substance is already completely dissociated. On further dilution, number is not going to increase. But obviously, when you increase the concentration uh, dilution, 
the particles are getting more space to travel. Maybe what increases with the dilution? It's not the number, it is the speed. So in the case of strong electrolyte, number is not increasing, speed is increasing. The increase that you see here is because of this increase in speed of the particles. In that case, why or how come this is reaching a maximum value after a certain dilution? So it is, it may be because after a certain dilution, maybe these particles have reached a maximum velocity. On further dilution, even if you have inner space, since the particles have reached its maximum velocity, further dilution is not increasing the mobility of the particles, further dilution is not increasing the velocity of the particles. The particles have already reached its maximum velocity, the further dilution is not increasing the velocity of the particles, thus it reaches a maximum value. Whereas in uh, weak electrolyte, with the dilution, what you see is the increase is very steep initially, but after a certain time, that increase is close to y-axis. It is not so steep later on, but initially it is very steep. So you need to explain why initially it is very steep and why it is not reaching a maximum value. Now, as you know, the weak electrolytes are not completely dissociated. The moment you start increasing the dilution, the dissociation of weak electrolyte starts increasing. Your molar conductivity depends much more on the number than on the speed. So with the dilution, since number is increasing very drastically, molar conductivity increases steeply. But as you know, the weak electrolytes are not completely dissociated at any dilution. So even if you keep increasing the concentration, uh, I'm sorry, even if you keep increasing the dilution, the dissociation is never complete, which means with every dilution, dissociation increases. It's never going to complete. It never reaches a maximum value. It keeps increasing. As you know, for 1 by 2, if you divide this by 2, it can be four, 1 by 4. 1 by 4 can further be divided to 1 by 8. 1 by 8 can further be divided to 1 by 16. Where is the end of it? So for strong electrolytes, you can see the molar conductivity reaches a maximum value. It is represented like this. Now the question is, is it possible to find out the molar conductivity at infinite dilution for a weak electrolyte? As you can see from the graph, it is not able to measure because it is not reaching a maximum value. Experimentally also, it is very tough to find out molar conductivity at infinite dilution of a weak electrolyte. The reason being that the solution keeps increasing its dilution, conductivity keeps decreasing. And at a very, very high dilution, the value of conductivity is so less that experimental measurement of conductivity becomes extremely difficult. So finding out the molar conductivity at infinite dilution of a weak electrolyte cannot be done experimentally, but there is a way out. A scientist called Kohlrushes studied about lambda infinity values. Kohlrushes studied about the lambda infinity of such substances. He realized that lambda infinity of a substance is number of ions into the contribution by each ion plus number of ions into contribution of that particular ion. So it is sum of the contributions of each ion. So by that uh, law, we can write lambda in, uh, the molar conductivity at infinite dilution of sodium chloride is molar conductivity at infinite dilution of Na plus plus molar conductivity at infinite dilution of Cl minus. Number of ions of Na plus is 1, number of ions Cl minus is 1. So what would be the molar conductivity at infinite dilution of K2SO4? It would be molar conductivity at infinite dilution of K plus, 
there are two k plus ions, so number of k plus ions is two, plus lambda infinity at infinite dilution of SO4 two minus. There is one SO4 two minus, so number of particles would be one here. So molar conductivity infinite dilution of K2SO4 would be molar conductivity at infinite dilution of K plus, there are two K plus ions. Molar conductivity at infinite dilution of SO4 2 minus, there is one SO4 2 minus ion. By the same way, the molar conductivity infinite dilution of aluminum chloride would be molar conductivity infinite dilution of Al3 plus plus three times molar conductivity infinite dilution, molar conductivity infinite dilution of Cl minus. So, this law can be utilized to find out lambda infinity or molar conductivity infinite dilution of weak electrolytes which otherwise could not be found out. Now, let us see how molar conductivity infinite dilution of a weak electrolyte like acetic acid can be found out using Kohlrausch's law. The lambda infinity of acetic acid or molar conductivity infinity of acetic acid can be written like this. Molar conductivity at infinite dilution of acetic acid can be written like this. Now, how you solve this? Uh, this problem of finding out lambda infinity or molar conductivity at infinite dilution of acetic acid is we can find out the molar conductivity at infinite dilution of sodium acetate which is a strong electrolyte. We can as well find out lambda infinity of uh, or molar conductivity at infinite dilution of HCl that also being a strong electrolyte. Similarly, molar conductivity at infinite dilution of sodium chloride also can be found out. Now, according to Kohlrausch's law, this value is equal to CH3CO minus plus Na plus. This is lambda infinity of H plus plus molar conductivity of Cl minus and this is Na plus plus Cl minus. So, if you add this value with this value and then subtract this value, it will become, so let us say this is uh, CH3CO or Na which is experimentally determined. With this we add HCl which again is experimentally determined being a strong electrolyte. Subtract the value of NaCl, this is the lambda infinity of acetic acid. The reason being that lambda infinity value of Na plus whether it is associated with an acetate ion or with a Cl minus ion remains same as per Kohlrausch's law. So, it does not matter an ion is associated with which other ion the contribution remains same. So, this value and this value are same. The same way the molar conductivity at infinite dilution of Cl minus whether it is with H plus or with Na plus are same according to Kohlrausch's law. Therefore, when you add this with this and then subtract this, you get lambda infinity or molar conductivity infinite dilution of acetic acid. This is one of the applications of Kohlrausch's law. We will now see the one more application of Kohlrausch's law. We can use Kohlrausch's law to find out the degree of dissociation of weak electrolytes also. By degree of dissociation, we mean extent of association. The 
extent of association can be either 50 percentage or 40 percentage or 60 percentage. What it means is how much of the total substance getting dissociated. So if you want to find out the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte, say acetic acid, at any dilution, find out the lambda infinity of acetic acid at that dilution, not lambda infinity. It is at that particular dilution, let us say lambda c. You divide this with the molar conductivity at infinite dilution of the same substance, which is CH3COOH. This gives the degree of dissociation. This is another application of Paul Rush's law. This has to be found out by the method we have described already using three different electrolytes. All of them should be strong electrolytes. And uh, I am sorry, this must be found out by using the strong electrolytes, three electrolytes we need to use. And this can be measured using which the degree of dissociation can be calculated. So two applications of Paul Rush's law are, one is to find out a degree of dissociation, another is to find out degree of dissociation at infinite dilution of a weak electrolyte. So thus comes the, the end of this discussion of molar conductivity at infinite dilutions. We will now move on to the next session. The next section is electrolysis. We have been discussing about electrochemical cells. Now let us start discussing about electrolysis. The major difference is in electrochemical cells because of electric because of the chemical reaction you get electricity whereas in electrolytic cell the electricity is supplied to the cell for bringing about chemical changes. So in this case we tap out electricity, in this case we supply electricity, here chemical change gives electricity, here the electricity brings about chemical change. We will try to see the other differences between electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell. Here you can see the first figure shows an electrochemical cell. You can see there are two electrodes, there is a salt bridge, this much of electricity is being produced. Whereas in this case you can see there is an external source of electro, uh, electricity. This electricity which is supplied is bringing about the chemical changes. So what you can see here is 